Well, he is known as a competitor who expects to win. And in his more than two years as Purdue's athletics director, Mike Bobinski uh, has certainly uh, done his uh, share of winning in West Lafayette. 11 Boilermaker teams finishing in their uh, top 25, in their respective uh, sports uh, over the last couple of years. But perhaps the most uh, high profile win, keeping head football coach Jeff Brom uh, on the West Lafayette campus. And for more on the big business of college sports, please to welcome to the show, Mike Bobinski. Mike, welcome. Thank you, Gary. Uh, well, let's talk about that. A lot of things going on in, in the world of sports uh, at Purdue and beyond. But the Jeff Brom story, the head yeah. coach uh, there who has uh, turned the program around in so many ways, got a lot of national attention, was courted by his hometown, sure. uh, University of Louisville, able to keep him there. A lot of people said that made a statement about Purdue's commitment to football. I think it did, uh, it without some not without some anxious moments along mm -hmm. the way, as there always are. But because of the unique situation with Jeff, his hometown, mm -hmm. his alma mater, a place where his name is on, in the ring of honor there, right. it's, 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 a, it's got a lots of emotional tie to him. Uh, so I knew that was going to be uh, difficult for him to deal with. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I think it made a loud statement about what he believes he and his staff are building at Purdue, his commitment to seeing that through. Uh, and and I, it makes me and I think all of our fans extremely excited about where we're headed. I, we couldn't be, I couldn't be more thrilled. Our, our community, the entire Purdue community, mm -hmm. could not be more thrilled to have Jeff's continued leadership. You and I were talking off camera. You want to continue to build uh, the infrastructure, uh, if you will, ross A Stadium. Uh, has undergone a number of improvements in recent years, lights and concourse improvements. But you are in the process now of sending out um, uh, surveys to a lot of fans, a lot of uh, supporters, wanting to get that kind of that next level, if you will. Talk about potential future uh, improvements at ross -Aid. Sure. So when you've got a stadium that's nearly 100 years old and its base infrastructure, you, you, things are going to happen. You're going to need to, to sort of modernize and get it to where it needs to be. So we're trying to really reimagine ross -Aid for the next 25 to 50 years. And to do that, uh, we didn't want to do it just based on sitting around a room and thinking what we might believe is best and what our fans might want. Uh, we actually tried, we've engaged a company out of, off, out of the West Coast who's got tremendous professional sport experience, professional big event experience, and they've uh, launched a series of surveys mm -hmm. uh, that we're getting a tremendous response rate to where they're asking our fans what it is they'd like to see in a, in a new Ross Aid and a reimagined mm -hmm. Ross Aid uh, for the future. I think it's going to be a really interesting process. Uh, it'll inform our planning, it'll inform our strategy, it'll inform our design, and, and hopefully inform the economics of how we move forward with Ross Aid for, again, the long haul. And it's, uh, it's something that uh, we will take a little time to do it. We're going to have to raise a lot of money when, when we ultimately come up with a solution. But I'm excited about where it'll take us and where it'll position our football program for the, the years ahead. Yeah, when well, you talk about uh, the economics of college sports, uh, you've been in the business for a number of years, 35 years, former athletic director at Georgia Tech and Xavier. Yep. Uh, a lot has changed uh, over the course of, of your career. Talk about that big business aspect because it is in so many ways big business. When I was uh, first began in this business in South Bend at Notre Dame actually back in 1984, I would uh, tell you that when we crested the $10 million budget mark, it was sort of, wow, can you believe this? Yeah. Well, now here at Purdue, we're approaching a $100 million wow. uh, yeah. budget uh, yeah. operation. So when you, when you run a, a $100 million organization mm -hmm. uh, with 275 staff members, mm -hmm. 500 plus student athletes and all the moving parts that go into that, it's, it's complicated, it's complex, and it's, it's highly competitive. You know, we live in a world where everybody's trying to always get an advantage and gain an advantage, and lots of that ties back to economics. And so making sure that we're as efficient as we can be in managing our resources, in generating and developing new resources, uh, is, is hugely important, and it's sort of top of mind every day for us. So we, we work really hard at it. And the economics, uh, football and basketball, largely drive uh, the other programs that don't get perhaps as much attention but are right. very important, the Olympic sports. And I know you're proud of the progress that yes. a lot of the programs have made at Purdue. I sure am. And, and while they do rely on the, on the financial uh, well-being of football and men's basketball. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with where, where our volleyball program is, where our wrestling program is going, where our baseball program is going. Our women's track team finished eighth in the country last year, and uh, you know we have, have made tremendous strides. And I think that's going to continue. So we're, we're, I'm really pleased. We've got a, we've got a world-class diving team. You know, we've got our, our men's diving coach or our, our diving coach is, is probably the best in the country, and we've got Olympians in our yep. pool day in and day out. And that's exciting to see that level of excellence and accomplishment on in, at Purdue. Yeah, I want to get a TV question in too because you know Big Ten Network. Yeah. has been such a game changer, I think, for uh, for universities in the conference. As you look at that exposure and, and on Fox now and 
all the different yeah. uh, ways that that happens. How, how important is that TV piece? Uh, I, I will tell you, Gary, without that, uh, we would struggle to compete. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a tremendous boon to us. It, tr it creates the occasional heartburn with schedule. You know, we yep. play at some odd times and some odd, odd days. Uh, but that is, while it's an inconvenience, it's a trade-off that I think on, on balance has been hugely beneficial and positive for us. It's a revenue source that's unmatched in the country, uh, but it's an exposure vehicle, I think, more so more than anything. Yeah, we only have 15 seconds, but we'll give you a chance to talk about basketball because yeah. the men's basketball team has really been playing well. Exciting to watch a, young, a group of young guys come together and figure it out, figure out their roles, and, and become, uh, I think, a force in the Big Ten and nationally this year. All right, Mike Babinski, the athletic director at uh, Purdue University. A lot going on, on the business, in the business of sports, and Mike, as always, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Thanks, All Gary. Right.